Hey, what's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to talk about Niagara's GBuffer interface. As its name implies, it's a way for you to access GBuffers in Niagara. GBuffer stands for Geometry Buffer. It's very common with deferred renderers, and it's essentially a way to store all the geometry information required to compute lighting per pixel, rather than per light and per geometry, like it's typically done with forward renderers. So it's a way to store, say, the geometry orientation via the world normal buffer, the geometry color via the color buffer, there's the roughness and specular buffers, the depth buffer to store how distant geometry is to the camera, and so on. You get the idea. And Niagara allows you to sample those buffers at a given UV coordinate, and you can use that to drive any kind of logic, particles position, color alignment, and so on. The sky is the limit. Now, it's quite niche, and you probably won't have a daily use for this, but it's definitely worth knowing, and there's a few cool things you can do with it. To demonstrate this, I've built a demo project with a few examples. The first one is quite straightforward, and actually should be barely visible, especially with YouTube's compression, I bet, but if I select that particle system, it should be a bit more visible. Particles are spawned on surfaces and are colorized accordingly. It's really simple, you see, this particle system doesn't have much to it. There's this simple spawn rate, then initialize particle to set the particle size. The key logic happens in this custom module I named project to g buffer. So first, there's this vector 2D input I named UVs that let me generate random viewport UV coordinates per particle. This is the viewport UV coordinate that particles will sample the GBuffers at, right? Maybe here, maybe there. It's really just a random 0 to 1 UV coordinate given to each particle when spawned. Now here I just need to flip the V coordinate, don't worry too much about it. At that UV coordinate, I then sample the depth buffer. Basically, this is an image that contains how distant, in centimeters, opaque surfaces are to the camera in its forward axis, okay? So I get and forward the depth value to this tiny custom HLSL node. This HLSL node also needs the camera's screen to wall transform, so add a camera query and you can access this node here to get it. Now the name is important here. This is a screen to wall transform, so it expects screen coordinates. And screen coordinates are not in a 0 to 1 range, like the viewport UVs, because 0, 0 isn't actually up here, it's right in the middle of the screen. And so it goes from minus 1 to 1 on each axis, okay? So I can just remap the given UV coordinate to that range to convert it to a screen coordinate, and voila. Then this matrix multiplication converts a screen position with a given depth to a world position. That may sound obscure, so let's step aside for a moment. It drastically helps to think about this in reverse, meaning, say you have some kind of position in world space, right? Then you have your camera, so you know its location, rotation, and FOV. So based on that information, there's ways, using somewhat simple math, to convert that 3D location into a 2D screen position, if only that's possible, right? Obviously, there are configurations where the 3D location isn't visible from that point of view. Anyway, not only you can transform 3D positions to 2D screen coordinates, but you can also get the depth. Now, this depth is not that 3D distance. Depth is always in planar space, right? So it's the distance along the camera's forward axis. Back to this HLSL node, essentially what we are doing here is that, but in reverse. It's like saying, hey, here's the depth, here's the transform matrix necessary to apply that camera's location and rotation transform, and take the FOV into account, and so, with this simple matrix multiplication, give me the corresponding 3D world position. And then the color buffer is sampled at that same viewport UV location to get well the scene color and colorize the particle with it. And that's it. So you see, at first, I don't really give any position to the particles at all. I just assign each particle a random viewport UV coordinate to sample the depth and derive a world position from that depth and the camera screen to world transform matrix. The second example is much more visual, and it's actually the same exact particle system, okay? I merely added a post-process material to the scene, which just outputs a plain color. Now, there's two important things to note here. First, a post-process material doesn't mess with G-buffers, so despite colorizing the entire scene with a plain color here, the color G-buffer still contains the scene color. Second, this post-process material is configured to be injected before the translucency, so that particles that use a translucent material can be drawn on top. And that alone creates this interesting reread effect. The third example is similar, it still uses the same post-process material, but this time I tweak the particle system a bit. 
Now, instead of giving each particle a random viewport UV coordinate, I compute a UV coordinate based on the particle's index. So each particle is given a unique index by Niagara, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And from that index, using that bit of math, and given a 2D grid size, I can derive a 2D grid position, which is normalized in a 0 to 1 range, to build a grid UV coordinate. I'll probably make a separate video on this, because it's a really useful thing to know when using grid-based systems, like Niagara's 2D and 3D grid interfaces. Anyway, so the depth and color buffers are no longer sampled at a random viewport UV coordinate, but based on a grid position that is incremented and looped around as particles are spawned. Particles color is then simply lerped from some bluish color to the color sample from the G-buffer, and this creates that skyline effect. Although the depth sampled here is now a module output, so it can be accessed down there to drive the particle size and scale them relative to how distant they are to the camera. The fourth example features a particle system that no longer spawns particles per second. Instead, a fixed amount of particles is spawned once, just enough to fill the screen based on the given grid X and Y resolution, and those particles never die. That same logic is then used to give those particles a viewport grid UV coordinate based on their indexes. Although you may notice some flickering, that's due to the temporal anti-aliasing that produces sub-pixel camera movement jitter. That can be fixed by turning off temporal anti-aliasing, but you most likely want to keep it on, so I'm not sure there's a proper workaround for this flickering. Moving on, fifth example. This particle system still spawns a fixed amount of particles just once. However, the depth sample from the G-buffer is now output from that module and sent to that small dynamic input script to offset time, which is then passed through a sign node to control the particle's screen space size. And this gives that kind of sonar effect. The color sample from the G-buffer is just simply desaturated in the particle's material, nothing too fancy. Also, just as a reminder, this scene is by default entirely black because of this post-processed material that overrides the scene color with a plain color, just before translucency is rendered, right? So the geometry is actually still there, it's just black, and so particles may clip through this black geometry. To go around that, I made the particles translucent material in your depth test, so particles are essentially drawn on the screen and in your any kind of occlusion, so they don't clip through geometry anymore. Moving on, the next example no longer has that black post-process material applied. That said, this particle system still does spawn a fixed amount of particles in a grid in screen space. However, I no longer sample the depth buffer, but the custom depth buffer. You may enable it here, by the way. See spheres, they all write to the custom depth buffer and that Niagara particle system, instead of sampling the basic depth buffer, now samples the custom depth buffer, so particles only read a custom depth when displayed on top of the spheres in screen space. And that's used to drive the particle scale and essentially hide the rest of them. The next example is extremely similar, but I tried something a bit experimental and tried to draw those stylized outlines. Now again, it drastically suffers from the temporal anti-aliasing jitter, so it may prove to be unusable, although there is a way to specifically disable TIA on custom depths, so that might be a solution for you. So if you have created outlines in a post-process material using a convolution kernel before, well, the idea is the same here. I have all these particles displayed in a grid in screen space, one after the other, right? Using an attribute reader, I can have a particle ask data from its neighboring particles. So I make each particle ask if the particle to its left, right, row above and below had sampled a custom depth the frame before. Then check if that particle itself had sampled a custom depth, and if there's a difference between the two statements, well, have this particle be an outline particle and drive its scale. And that creates that kind of stylized outline. It's a bit weird, it's a bit glitchy as well again, not sure if there's any use for this, but it's just an idea. The last example is also just really an ID and is headache inducing IF, but it's really just to show you can go nuts and I'll let you take a peek at the project files that just released on my Patreon as a tier 1 reward if you want to have a look at it. Alright, that's the Niagara G buffer interface. Again, it's a bit niche, but it certainly can be quite useful and I've only really scratched the surface here. Also, make sure to check the content examples. In this demo map, there's this example which perfectly demonstrates how G-buffers can be sampled in a nutshell. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.